Hey everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's Graham. Today I'm going to be doing a speed paint. I'm using um, Turner's Japanese Acrylic Wash. This is my second piece using this medium, and I'm really excited to share it with you today. I've done one other piece with this since getting this set, and I really, really loved working with it. I wasn't super happy with the result of that piece, so I was really excited and I've been looking forward to, to trying again um, and seeing what else I can do with it. Like I said, I really enjoyed the process of painting with these paints, I just wasn't super pumped about the end result. And I think with today's piece, I both, again, really enjoyed working with it, but also am super pumped about the, the end result. I really like it. Um, one thing that right off the bat, I was excited about this piece and this gouache. Um, you can see as I'm sketching it, I actually really messed up her face. Um, the proportions were a little bit off and her eyes and nose were too far down the page was the biggest problem. Um, and I realized that at the end, um, that the things were off. And normally that would mean a lot of erasing, which can mess up paper, or I would have to start up, start again, start over, which I've done plenty of times. And this time when I noticed that her face was off and I realized why, instead of starting over like I've done in the past, or I would have done if I'd been using another medium, I was able to remember that I was going to be using an opaque medium, and this is completely okay with acrylic wash, and I can make it look alright. So I was able to skip that step and kind of go straight in with the paint. Now, uh, the reference photo that I'm using for this is near and dear to my heart. Uh, it's actually a picture of my stepsister from Halloween when we were kids. And I got this picture recently. It's actually a picture of a picture. Um, I spent the last week on vacation visiting my grandmother in Colorado. And one of my favorite things to do when I go to visit is to go through all of her old photo albums. And she's got tons of pictures of me when I was a kid, of my brother and my stepsister. And looking through those old photos is great. Um, you know, also plenty of, of my grandfather and her when they were young, my parents when they were young. It's just this amazing walk through time, and I love doing it. And I found a bunch of pictures that I took pictures of um, with the intention of using them for reference and painting because I found them really inspiring. But this by far was my favorite. Um, it's a very 90s Halloween costume and her facial expression in the picture is just so, I don't know, it's unamused. And, and that's what I ended up calling this piece is unamused. And I like the juxtaposition of, of being an unamused clown um, and it just I didn't get all of her body in the picture, but it was a very 90s pose that she was doing, and it just, it spoke to me. I'm, I'm very much a child of the 90s. There's also something really cool about painting a memory. Now, I don't have a great memory myself, uh, in the way that I would be able to just pull something out of my mind's eye and, and paint that, but I remember when this picture was taken, and I was there, and I remember what she looked like, and it's just a piece of my childhood. I think going on this vacation and being there with my grandma and looking through those pictures, it was probably the biggest well of inspiration that I've had in a while, and I, I really, really needed that. I've been kind of struggling recently and going through a bit of a dry spell and not knowing what I wanted to paint. Um, I find myself really stretching and reaching for ideas recently. and. Just that this whole past week of being on vacation and being there with her really kind of refilled that bank, my, my inspiration bank. And I was really excited to be able to use some of that as reference. I was curious uh, going into vacation, um, and a little apprehensive too, about how I would handle art while on vacation. I haven't taken a vacation since art became a serious part of my life. And at the outset, it, sound, it seemed to me like something that was going to be kind of difficult to juggle. Um, I sometimes struggle to find time to invest in art during my normal, just everyday life. Um, so how was I going to be able to sustain that while traveling? And it turns out that I actually did more drawing and more art, more painting in the week that I was on vacation than I've 
been able to do recently. Probably because I wasn't, you know, doing my day-to-day -day life things, but also I just felt really free, unencumbered. Um, I drew on a plane and a train in a car. I did a painting in a car. I did a lot of painting at my grandma's kitchen table. Um, she wanted me to do a portrait of her, so I got to paint a really cool picture of her as a girl. Um, yeah, it was just a really great experience. If you're struggling with art block or feeling uninspired, I highly recommend taking vacation. And it doesn't have to be a week, it doesn't have to be to go see family, but you know, just getting away from your day-to-day -day life and your day-to-day -day responsibilities, for me, ended up being exceptionally inspiring. Um, and it also gave me a lot more freedom to, to make art and to get back into doing it and loving it, which I really needed. Um, so going into this piece, I'm, I'm using um, acrylic gouache, but it's the Japanese acrylic gouache um, from Turner, and I will link the video that I did previously reviewing these colors and doing the previous uh, speed paints on them somewhere in the description, so you can check that out if you haven't already. Acrylic gouache shares properties with both acrylic paint and gouache. Um, it is matte when dry, like gouache. It is not water rewettable when dry. Like acrylic. Um, it does, I find, dilute better than acrylic does, more like you would expect gouache to do. Um, these differ from regular acrylic gouache in their texture, primarily, so they have a very kind of sandy texture, so it gives the same kind of matte finish that you would expect with normal gouache, but it's almost like suede. It's, it's a little bit gritty, and it, it yeah, it looks to me like suede or like velvet. I really, really love the texture of these paints. It's not something that I found in any other paint. Um, the one peculiarity about the set that I have is the color choice. So I have a, I have a 12 set. It's the standard starter 12 set Japanese acrylic gouache. And it is not the traditional color palette that you would expect. These are traditional Japanese colors, so they're meant to be the colors that would be used in traditional Japanese art, um, which I find to be an interesting challenge because it is outside the normal color palette that I use um, or that I'm used to. And I've been working on this a little bit in a couple different ways. Um, different color palettes um, and trying to diversify a little bit, either using color palettes that I'm not familiar with or trying to use a more limited palette. And so this is a little bit of both. It is somewhat limited um, and outside my comfort zone. So I really like that aspect of the paints. Um, the reds I use for the first time in this piece, it comes with I think two or three different reds, and I was just wowed by their vibrancy. Um, it's what I obviously used on her ruff in the picture. Um, they're just super brilliant and vibrant, and I, I loved those colors and working with them. Um, I have found it rather difficult to get a, a brown. Uh, I haven't seemed to manage to do that yet. Um, but you get a, a gorgeous range of blues and reds and purples. Um, I did get a kind of brownish purple for her hair, and I was happy with the end results, but going into it, it wasn't the color that I had expected to mix. So I'm definitely still learning. It, it's teaching me a lot about color mixing. Um, the other place that I struggled a little bit is the consistency. And this is just not being super familiar with acrylic gouache. Um, I haven't used it a ton. I've used my Japanese set now twice, and the regular acrylic gouache a couple times before that. Um, but it's definitely not my most comfortable medium. So figuring out the correct dilution of water to paint to get the right consistency. And it seems to vary a little bit by color. Um, I know in the set that I got, the yellow is definitely the thickest and needs the most water. Um, some of the colors seem to work better, uh, more neat, and then like the reds flowed m the best when they had more water um, diluting them a little bit.
I think part of the consistency issue isn't just that it's an unfamiliar medium, but I was actually using um, a new brush with this and not the brush that I would normally use with acrylic gouache. Um, not only did I come home from vacation uh, a lot more inspired and feeling much more rested, I came home without any of my paintbrushes. So I rather foolishly keep all of my paintbrushes in a single box and I took them with me on vacation and unloading my bag off of the flight when it came off the uh, baggage claim wheel, the uh, zipper had busted. So my suitcase kind of spread out a little bit. Um, I found one watercolor palette circling the wheel um, and apparently all of my brushes are gone. So my box of brushes belongs to the sea now and I had to use a new brush so I didn't realize how much using a different brush would really affect the way that I paint and I mean it makes sense when you think about it but yeah it definitely affects the water control so it's something that I was adjusting to. Uh, the other big adjustment um, moving from water watercolor into this medium is learning how to layer. Um, on the one hand, it's super exciting to be able to go from dark to light, so painting that white face paint on top of her you know, skin-colored face isn't something that I would be able to do in watercolor, and it's something that I can do here. Um, as I mentioned, being able to cover up the fact that I completely mess messed up her eyes in the original sketch and moved them about a half an inch upwards. Like, those sorts of things are great because I can layer opaquely and that works. Um, but when adding layers on top of the dried paint, um, it's just a mental adjustment that I have to do to remember that I need to use a darker version or a tinted version of the color that I already used or like that's not something that I would normally do in watercolor. So I found myself like mentally readjusting to that every time I needed to do a layer. Um, it's just, you know, kind of a learning curve of learning a new medium. And I did find it extremely enjoyable to be able to do those things. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm extremely happy with the way that this turned out. It was a real pleasure to paint and the end results, I liked it a lot. Um, it's really exciting to finish a piece and not only be happy with it, but be excited to keep working. Um, and that's not something that I felt in a little while, so it was a nice surprise. That's all I have for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, give it a like if you did. Subscribe if you haven't already. Um, make sure to hit the notification bell so you can be notified of when I upload my next video. I normally upload every Thursday. Um, thank you again so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.